You guys have been asking for it for years, and we're finally going to give it to you. Using one of our most popular products, we're going to eliminate this slip yoke with our Hack and Tap Slip Yoke Eliminator. All right, we got an XJ here. Um, you can see it's kind of empty underneath it. We're going kind of full project mode on it. Now you're going to see what's happening on this Jeep and another video list, another build series. So make sure you're watching our channel for that. But for today, while it's still got a 231 in there, we're going to get you what you've been asking for an install video on the hack and tap slip yoke eliminator. Now the kit comes with, of course, the yoke and your hardware kit. The tools that we're going to need for the job can be purchased separately if you don't already have them, which is going to be your 3 8 tap, a 5 16 drill bit, and a quarter inch drill bit, along with your drill jig. Now, the Hack and Tap is a slip yoke eliminator, uh, but it's a little bit different than the more traditional style that we're used to seeing that replaces the case and the output shaft. And that's where we get into kind of the pros and the cons, which one's right for you. Um, this one, it's it's simple, it's economical. We don't have to tear into the transfer case. We don't have to take the transfer case out of the vehicle. Very straightforward, easy, economical. However, the cons is you are still maintaining that smaller 27 spline output shaft versus going to the more traditional style where you are replacing that backside. You are uh, upgrading to that 32 spline output shaft. So you are getting a beef in your setup there. Now, again, a couple ways to look at it. Um, if you're worried about breaking a 27 spline output shaft, you should maybe be worried about the case in general for your build. It might not be suitable for you anymore. However, if you're going to be tearing into that transfer case, you got, you know, you got a good 231 like what we're working on, but it's a little tighter. You're going to break into it. You're going to do the wide chain upgrade. You're going to do the planetary upgrade. You can do that kind of stuff. You're already in there. Why not just do the full blown upgrade? So it's really up to you. For a lot of us who are going to be running that OEM style transfer case, this is a great solution. Very easy, very economical. Now the Hack and Tap Slip Yoke Eliminator is designed for the 27 spline output shaft transfer cases uh, to include the 231 like we're working on today, 242, um, and also the 247 and 249 found in the Grand Cherokees. Now it might also fit on other uh, 27 spline output shafts, but the ones that we verified and know and work are going to be within the Jeep family. All right, so I've already gone ahead and measured on my output shaft for that minimum inch and a quarter of usable full spline. Now, I gave myself a little bit of extra just to make sure I'm accounting for the width of my cutting tool, things like that. I can always take a little bit more off. You can't add it back once it's gone. Now, again, this is not a guarantee that we're going to be able to use that OEM front drive shaft from XJ on the back of the XJ. Um, so before you go scrounge around for hours at the uh, scrap yard or you order that custom one online because that custom one, if it's not right, you can't return it, it's custom. So we're gonna do our due diligence, take the, the few minutes now to save our headache later. Now when we're measuring, we're looking for 33 and three quarter inches from the mounting face of the yoke, which is essentially halfway through that U-joint up to the shaft. And we know when we're taking this measurement, now that I've marked uh, my minimum amount of splines, if I'm forward of that line, I can't use that 33 and three quarter, you know, measurement for that OEM shaft. If I'm behind that line, we're golden. We can do whatever we want there. And again, this one is a simulation as we mentioned before, but that this is how it's going to work for you in the real world. As we've mocked things up here, my 33 and three quarter is behind my mark towards the rear of the vehicle. So if I wanted to, in this mock-up, I could run that OEM front drive shaft. That's not the way this project's going. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and cut this output shaft right down to that minimum of inch and a quarter of usable spline. So then that way we're getting the longest shaft possible for the future of this build. The output shaft on these transfer cases is a case hardened. It's not fully hardened, it's case hardened. So for some people we've heard they might not even cut off at all and just you know skip that step and drill right in the end. But if you do that, now you're drilling through that case hardening and that's, that's a job, that takes some time. 
So even if you don't want to cut all that off, we do still recommend cutting in a little bit just so you get to that relatively soft material. Now we've, we've heard a few different ways of, you know, how other people have cut these, you know, um, you know, using sawzall, cutoff wheels, that kind of stuff. We even heard of people putting, putting this in drive, getting that shaft rotate as you're cutting it. Now I'm sure that gets you a pretty straight cut, but a little sketchy if you ask me. So what we're going to use here is our uh, angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. So we've made it all the way through the output shaft, making our cut. As you can see on the drop here from what we cut, it's not as perfectly flat, but as we were cutting with the transfer case in four wheel drive and the front drive shaft out, we were able just to rotate that front yoke, which rotated the rear output. So as we're cutting, we are able to rotate and cut and cut and cut. Same thing when it came to chanfering. Just got the flap disc up there, cleaned up the end of it so it's nice and clean and flat, and then also rotate it while we're doing the chamfer. So now we're able to do a quick test fit of the yoke. Yeah, smooth as butter. Now we're ready to drill and tap. Little rewind here. You may have noticed we're missing something here. Being as we cut this output shaft as far back as we could, we had to remove this dust seal. Now, some people live and die by these things. If, uh, if you absolutely personally must keep that on, you can trim the backside of your yoke a little bit because that's just a dead space anyway. Or like we did, just take it off. Now it's time to drill. So we're gonna use this awesome fancy drill jig, which again, a little rewind, has an awesome feature. It's got these windows all the way around it so that after you're done cutting, you can check the flatness of that end. And it looks like we got her pretty darn nailed here. So everything's looking good. Let's grab our drill. Now we have a, a quarter inch pilot to, to get things started. But before that, we're going to actually use the larger drill bit, the 5 16 because that's what's... Uh, made for the end of the drill jig and we're, we're basically get, basically going to use that as our punch we're going to get a nice little pocket started with the 5 16 then we're going to do the quarter inch to get our full depth drill come back with the 5 16 then tap All right, we got that pocket started, so we're going to switch back to that quarter inch bit and uh, do you know do our full depth drill uh, with that. Now, a little pro tip, as you always know, if you're going to drill, use some lube. All right, we've uh, drilled into that output shaft. Took some time; it wasn't easy, but you can do anything if you got a little can in your heart. So now. It's time to start tapping. Now, when you're tapping, just like when you're drilling, take your time, make sure you're straight, use a little lube, make sure you get nice, strong threads in there. All right, hole is now tapped. We, uh, we checked our depth and fitment with the bolt. I'm gonna throw some uh, red Loctite on there. And let's go get this bad Larry slapped in here. the hack and tap slapped on in there we'd be ready to do some measurements for our uh, custom length drive shaft if uh, if you like the video if you found it helpful make sure you like share comment follow us on uh, social media platforms uh, facebook instagram tiktok and of course subscribe to our youtube channel use some lube
I'll f*** that up. I'll cut that out. <laughs> Tried to bring a little bit of fun back to it. Lube. <laughs>